Hey friends, welcome. Where are you guys all from? This is my husband, Josh. We'll wait a little bit for more people to come on before we do like formal introductions, but he is real and he does exist. Hi. <laughs> I'm very awkward on camera, which is why I try to not be on camera very often if I can help it, but He's not awkward here. on camera. Well, I can be. Also, I hope audio levels are okay. We're kind of trying a new thing here. Oh yeah, we have a completely new bad. setup here. Last time I just did my live stream on my um, computer. And now we have like a computer and like sound and lighting and tell us if it's okay. People are saying hi to you, Josh. There is audio, so that's good. Oh, good. We're going to make a pear martini today and we're just going to hang out. I want to talk about, I made this infused pear vodka and it was something I kind of just did on my own. I didn't make a YouTube video on it, but it is saved on my Instagram highlights. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I do a bunch of like recipe testing and things over there. So you could go follow me over there and kind of see behind the scenes things that I might be testing before I make a YouTube video on it. So. All right. These are going really fast. So if people are asking questions, we're going to try our best to see how about this? Respond to them. If you ask a question, can you put it all in capitals? And then that way we might be able to see the question a little bit easier and maybe put a couple X um, question marks or something. And that way it'll show up a little bit easier for us to read. Can you turn your volume up? Can you turn the volume up? I could certainly try. I don't know if it'll blow you out though. So... How is the sound and the, yep. Josh is here. He's hanging out with us today. He, um, he didn't think that this would happen so quickly and neither did I. So I knew it would happen. I just didn't know it happened so quickly. That's for sure. I was thinking maybe a year or something. Maybe you guys just tell me when this is good. Cause I'm raising the volume. Just stop there and let people, I have no idea. Is this better? Far. Tell us if it's better question. Have you ever received your, oh gosh. No, I did not get my play button back. You have to apply and it hasn't given us the option to apply yet. You have to get some code or something. And, um, oh, I have the oven going. I have a freezer meal in the oven because I didn't want to have to cook dinner tonight. So I just threw in the chicken tetrazzini. So if you watch my last freezer cook cooking video, that's what we have in the oven. And that's what we're going to eat for dinner tonight after this. Awesome. And I am getting, how some... old are you guys? Um, I'm 31 and he's 31. We're both 31. We turned 31 this year. We're only yeah. like four months apart. Yeah. My birthday's in the summer and his birthday is in the spring. So. Yep. I did see a couple others pass here. So um, let's go ahead and, um, while Josh is looking for questions, I'm going to go ahead and just get started on the pear martini. This was inspired by this pear vodka that I made. Um, when I was, we have a pear tree. And I was, I dehydrated most of my pears this year because they were getting ripe too fast. And I didn't have time to can them with all the other food preservation stuff I was doing. So I had this thought I, when I was dehydrating them, I cut the cores of the pear out and they smelled really good. And I thought, what if I could infuse that flavor into vodka? So I literally, it's saved in my highlights on Instagram. If you want to see it, I took those cores, I put them in a Mason jar and I covered it in vodka. And that's what this is. That's what this color is. That's how much color we got from just pear cores. So it was a way to get two products. I got my dehydrated pear slices that are phenomenal. And then I got this pear vodka from the scraps, which I would have either, either composted, which I did end up composting anyway, because I still had to strain it out. And so I got two products. I got pear vodka, pear slices, and then I didn't give them to my chickens because I didn't think you would want to feed your chickens vodka infused pear cores. So I didn't do that. Probably could be. Oh, avoided. shoot. I wrote my recipe down for my martini on this paint swatch and I smudged it all off. So I'm going to have to look on my phone, excuse me. Um, but I have my recipe on scratchpantry.com if you want to follow along. And the recipe for the pear martini is on there. And while you're doing that, I will say I have mixed reviews on the audio. Several people have said it's good. Some have said it's too quiet. So I kind of just have to go with it's good here. If I make it too loud, then it could be also like blowing out your eardrums or some people's eardrums. So. Oh, I saw, um, did people ask questions? There's, we have a couple of, um, okay. super wow. chats. Yeah. One doesn't seem to have a question. So we'll look out for a question from Lori. Can you, Lori, um, if you have a question, please ask. We'll try and find that. And then we have a question from Lillian who asked how many years we're married and we have seven and a half, maybe I get it wrong all the time. I get confused on the year we got married and the year I graduated college. So I think we're at six and a half. We were married 
beginning of 2015. So, yikes. Live math isn't always good. Well, I said it wrong on YouTube videos, and it wasn't even live before. And Josh came to me, and he's like, uh, that's not the year we got married, but that's okay. We also got a super chat from Melissa, but there is no question here. But we really appreciate the message. It's so very sweet. Thank you, Melissa. So that is the pair of vodka there, and that was two ounces. And now I'm going to put one ounce of Grand Marnier. This is the first time I've ever bought this, was for this recipe. I kind of adapted a few recipes to make this one. We did some recipe testing. That smells so good. What is that? Made with, what, how do you say that? Orange liqueur and cognac. cognac. So one ounce of that. And then, okay, so funny story. So when I knew that I wanted to make a pear martini or a pear cocktail for this recipe, I looked up a bunch of pear cocktails. We did some recipe testing and I did that, showed that on Instagram. And pear nectar is one of the ingredients in all of them. And I couldn't find pear nectar. I went to a liquor store. I went to a couple different grocery stores and I could not find it anywhere. I asked a bunch of people, like um, clerks, if they knew where I could find it and no one even knew what I was talking about. And it's basically just pear juice. And I did end up finding it and it took me probably an hour between going to all the different grocery stores. And then I remembered I made my own pear juice. <laughs> so as soon as I found it on the shelf, it hit me like, oh my gosh, I have like six jars of this at home. So, so glad you didn't find it. Well, I did find it. Well, it was, yeah. Okay. So we do have another super chat here from, I don't know if it's actually named, but uh, they are asking, have you ever thought of drying oranges or lemons to make your own powder or add to soaps? I've dried them for Christmas decorations, but I have not dried them and used them in anything. So I need to, I made, I've dried them and put them in tea. Um, but I want to get more into soap making this winter. That's one thing we're going to be doing a lot more together is soap making and like lotion making and body butters and things like that. So, um, look out for those videos and yeah. go ahead. Oh, we also have a callback, um, that maybe we could just have a drunk chicken channel. A drunk um, which, chicken channel. I don't know the liability of that, but it might be a messy. A pita might get involved. That's a little simple syrup. And then the last ingredient is fresh lemon juice. And we have a question from Silent Runner. Does Josh know how to food prep as well? I know how to eat the food prep. <laughs> I gonna, know what Becky has taught me. I'm going to shake degree. this real quick. So if it gets loud, I'm sorry. Vigorously shake the recipe calls for. This could be deafening. Oh, sorry. It could be deafening. Who knows? Um, hopefully not. <laughs> Um, I do know how to food prep some stuff based on what Becky's done. I do a lot of research on things. Yeah, Josh is the researcher, so I'm the doer. I, well, yeah, I, so I basically, I could research myself to death and then never do anything. And Becky is kind of the opposite. Yeah, I'll so do it and then we'll figure it out later. So we can make a good team on that because mm -hmm. I can't stand the research part. So typically if I need something that's kind of like a more expensive purchase or something that is I don't know, more expensive or high tech or anything that needs research more than just like something small. I tell him, tell me which one I should buy or order. So I just made Josh's. So I'm going to make one for me. I'm going to do this a little bit quicker so that I can sit down and we can chat. We also have a couple of questions on how we met and that's tell, him, be, yeah. tell him the story, how we tell him how you told your family we met first. All right. So when we first met, um, we did meet online. We met on Match.com. It was uh, kind of newer at the time. Um, certainly wasn't something that everyone was doing, so we were maybe not super uh, excited and flamboyant about that story. I didn't um, care, but... Becky doesn't care about much, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I tend to care a lot about what people think, so um, I felt judged by that. So I, I, for the first little bit, I was telling people that I... <laughs> Met her in a Fred Meyer, which is our local grocery store. It's a Kroger. I met her in line, and that we just started talking while we waited for the clerk. I don't know why that's better, well, but at least it's it organic. Make, it makes you sound like um, you are confident enough to talk to someone in person. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically a social butterfly. So, <laughs> um, so we met on Match.com, and because it was, we met in 2012, I think. Or 13. 13. Um, things like Tinder and Bumble or Coffee Meets Bumble, all those things didn't really exist yet. So we had to pay to date online. 
I'm gonna shake this real quick. We have another question from Rachel that asks, what did you go to college for and have you found a job with your degree yet? Yeah. I think that's for me. Oh. Um, although I guess it applies to both. Um, but I, yeah, I, went, I recently went back to school. I already had a job doing what I love to do, which is I'm in IT and I'm a developer as well. I overfilled these a little bit. No, that's fine. Okay. I'll just be careful. Okay. Um, so I already had a degree, but I had gone to school at you know the the normal age for something completely unrelated something that i wasn't very passionate about so i just kind of stopped to go work and do what i wanted to do um, and after eight or nine years of doing that it kind of felt appropriate to, to actually deg get a degree and get the uh, certifications for that so well that's what I did. and it was during the um, worldwide shutdown and so it was a good time to go back to school because we weren't doing anything else so yeah, for the most part, other than the, the channel also kind of sparked at the same time. So Yeah, yeah. It was a busy true. time this it was. past uh, year. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Can you pick it up without spilling? i try and not spill it on either computer. Why no? Because I, over, I overfilled them just a little. These cups my mother-in-law bought me. They're, I love them. Cheers. <laughs> okay, taste it. Oh, that's good. That's really good. So I, um, we did a couple recipe testing and then he hasn't tried this actual recipe. It's a kind really? of a combination of the, the two? few recipes we tried. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you had a lemon something and a pear something. They both were, they both were pear, but one of them was more pear. And so I oh. like put less lemon in this recipe and more pear. And so it's really good. The pear vodka, the pear infused vodka it turned out That's really, really well. That's dangerous. That. My husband doesn't drink very much and like hardly at all. And uh, he tried some and he thought it was mixed with other stuff. That's how good it was. And it wasn't expensive vodka. I used Costco vodka, so which is not very good. I mean, it's fine, but there's a lot of seepage of the pear, yeah, which was awesome. So I want to do like a whole video or series on like infusing spirits or something like that. I think that would be super fun. If you guys, have you guys ever done anything like that? Can you let me know? Question, have you received, oh, that's old. <laughs> We're trying to keep up here. The, the all caps thing. Is that helping? It probably, yeah, it does help, but also there are a lot of them. So hopefully we're catching some of the questions that other people oh, are asking. Oh, here we asking. go. Latasha, I met my husband on Craigslist. We've been married for 10 years. I also, um, fib about, okay. Yeah, you, you tell a story. <laughs> That's cute. I don't really care. It doesn't really bother me because most people meet online now, you know, with like Tinder and Coffee Meets Bagel and all of those. So, yeah, we were just we were ahead of our time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Trendsetters. We do also have a couple of questions asking about what made us want to homestead or how do we get started cooking from scratch or that kind of stuff. Oh, you want to tell about that? Yeah. Cooking from scratch. My mom always let us in the kitchen whenever we wanted. There was like no rules about being in the kitchen. I was homeschooled, so I had a lot of time on my hands. And um, my mom would cook us breakfast a lot. She cooked like nice, like French toast and pancakes and waffles and things like that. She would cook us breakfast, but usually lunch we were, we, it was like fend for yourself. And we could literally do whatever we wanted. So I would pull a chair up to the stove and make macaroni and cheese and like top ramen and things like that and then I just would start, my friends would come over because all my friends growing up were homeschooled. So we spent a lot of time together. And one thing we did was we cooked a lot and baked a lot. And so that's kind of where I started cooking. And then it's just kind of fun to like think like, what can you make from scratch that you can buy from the store? And then that's kind of where the rabbit trail started. Like, can I make this instead of buy it? And so it's fun. Once I got my driver's license, I used to go to the library all the time by myself and I would find a cookbook and then I bring it home and like cook a bunch of the recipes out of it and stuff like that. Yeah. And as far as, um, how we got started, I guess, quote unquote homesteading is that, um, well, we, we bought this house three or four months before the start of the fun times <laughs> that we can't say because of YouTube, but, um, like the end of 2019, right? I believe. Yeah. And we bought so. it when we bought our first house, I wanted a garden because it's kind of like a natural progression. Like if you like to cook from scratch, and you want to push yourself and figure out what can you cook from scratch or make that you would normally buy at the store, 
then why wouldn't you want to then try to grow it too? That's kind of where that like evolution came from is once I like started making things on my own, then it was like, well, can I like get even closer to the start of that product? Yeah. And during the start of, uh, you know, late March, I believe, Becky is a dental hygienist. So that's one of the more higher risk yeah. jobs. So she was, I was not furloughed, I guess. I was uh, furloughed. Furloughed, is that the right word? Furloughed for four months, maybe a little bit longer. Ten weeks. Only 10 weeks. It felt like a while. <laughs> anyway, it was enough time where she was off work and able to actually build the garden because we had nothing back in the backyard. It was just, uh, yeah. uh, if anything, it was less than nothing because there was a bunch of miscellaneous debris, rock fields. And so. But we bought this house because I wanted a garden. So yes. when, we, when we first met and we bought our first home, I wanted a garden. But, you know, when you're a first time home buyer and your budget, you know, there's things that have to give. And one thing that had to give was an area for a garden because we had a tiny, tiny lot. And our lo the lot that we did have, there was tons of trees. And so, which we wanted because we also wanted privacy. And so privacy trumped an area for a garden. And because of the trees for privacy, there was no sun. I mean, maybe like an hour or two of sun in the middle of summer. So I did grow things like herbs, some spinach, some... I grew a couple things in pots on my front porch too, and that was about it. So when we sold that house, when we were looking to buy, we wanted to find somewhere where I could have a garden too. So For sure. And I've received a couple of other comments about the sound, so I'm gonna bump it just a little bit, a little bit further. Hopefully I'm not blowing people out, or hopefully we're not like topping out and all Well, buzzing. people can always turn their volume down, but they can't turn it up. They can only turn if it up I, so high. Well, if I gain it too much, then it's going to sound fuzzy like there are bees in our oh. mic or something. But we'll see. I can't really hear it, so hopefully that's enough and not too much. Um, we do have some questions that we missed that were, oh. I guess, super chats that we missed. So we have one from Miss Steffi V. It says, Josh, what is your favorite part of the homestead experience, and what's something you both are looking to learn? I think my favorite part is just it's really rewarding to eat food that grows in your backyard. Um, that's that's really awesome and it is a lot of work but there's something um, really amazing about being able to eat that and just knowing that the the nutrients are at the all-time high that they can be the flavor is really good I way better it's crazy like the tomatoes we're pulling out carrots are amazing carrots oh. carrots are one of the people have talked a lot about tomatoes as being <clears throat> like super fantastic which they're way better than store-bought tomatoes don't get me wrong but carrots are another thing that are on that list that mm -hmm. homegrown carrots are nothing like store-bought carrots. They're really spectacular. They're so good. They're and even, so good. Like I didn't know I like plums, but we have a plum tree back there and that's amazing. So I know I like plums now. Oh, someone wants to, someone's asking about my crock back there. That's kombucha. So I did a whole video on kombucha. So if you want to watch that, just Google kombucha and that's a continuous brew system. And I can link that, um, in the description box after this video if you want to check it out but that's the best way to make kombucha is in a crock like that and i guess as far as the thing that we're both looking to learn i think the next thing is uh bees mm -hmm. so i we put it off for a couple of years just because there's so much other stuff to do but that is one thing we've been we've been talking about that for years and even in my last house because in washington where we live legally you could have bees in suburban areas and i threatened to get bees in our last house which it probably wouldn't have been a good idea realistically to get bees but people would make fun of me of wanting bees and i did want bees but i'm actually should i tell them where i'm going in a go couple days yeah. so um i'm going to go to the homesteaders of america conference so if any of you guys are going to be there come say hi to me and i'm going to be taking some bee classes at the homesteaders of america conference and josh isn't able to go but my mom's going to go with me you guys have met her in a couple videos and then um I just joined the bee association for my county that I live in and unfortunately the first class is when I'm gone. So I'm going to be taking a bee class while I'm gone but then my county has a bee class once a month and starting next month I will start doing those classes with my county and then I did buy a couple books that I'm going to be reading on beekeeping. So that's the next like homesteading thing. And then sourdough. I just ordered a sourdough starter and I'm going to start making sourdough which I'm, I've tried but I failed. So. I actually didn't know that you were in the B, that you had done that yet. I told you I sent the check off. I'm not a good listener sometimes. <laughs> so I sent the check 
the association is pretty old school and you have to send a check and it took the communications pretty slow so i just found out like two days ago that the class was going to be while i'm at the homesteaders of america conference we have a lot of super chats that i think oh are yes let's let's by. address those i hope i didn't miss any between what we just answered and now but we have one from victoria that says love watching have you tried the freeze dryer much <laughs> Yes. Just coincidental. So we've done it. I've, we've done three rounds with the freeze dryer. And I'll link that in the description. The, it's linked in the description of this video. And I actually just wrapped up filming the first video with my freeze dryer today. Right before, like an hour before we started this. And I think we like it. You'll have to watch the video, but it's pretty, it's very Let me interesting Let get a couple things stuff. out. So look up for the next question. Okay. So the next question actually is, um, will you be doing a Christmas prep series soon? Yes. Not so, soon. So, yes. Not soon, but probably, I would guess, closer to late November. Mid so, late November. I'm going to do... My family celebrates the holidays, like the Jones side of the family celebrates the holidays, the week before... The Saturday before whatever the day... The Saturday before the holiday. So... we. I'm going to film with my mom, because we do a big Thanksgiving, and I think it's I mean, last year, obviously, it was kind of weird, but I'm going to do all the filming with my mom, and it will be out before Thanksgiving. So I'm going to do Thanksgiving and Christmas because I'm going to be able to film those and edit them before Christmas actually happens. So any other questions? Um, there are a few, but if you have some... So show and tell here. This was... The, so the first... When you buy your freeze dryer, the first thing you have to do is freeze dry bread because bread... <clears throat> Um, in case there's any like oils or anything in your freeze dryer, you just dehydrate bread, make sure it works, and then you toss that. And then the second thing we freeze dried were peaches, and I showed this on my Instagram too, and peppers. The peaches are like some crazy scientific candy. Yeah. They're so good. And then um, I did a second round of peppers, and I filmed um, freeze drying peppers and eggs. So this is freeze dried eggs. And we, we um, cook them up, and you'll see how when I that video comes out, it's going to come out this, uh, maybe in a week, week, a little over a week, um, whether we liked these or not. But um, the peaches are fantastic. And the peppers. We've been actually snacking on the peppers, and they're kind of weirdly like a good snack. Yeah, it's like condensed flavor almost because you just have less water. They're like crunchy watering though. It down, so it's, and the peppers too are really awesome. A lot of flavor. Yeah, so they're like, they're just like little crunchy peppers. So I think it would be kind of fun to make like some trail mix type things and adding like vegetables that are, because you get that crunch like you'd want from like a potato chip or something like that. You know, it's part of the lemon peel. Or the lemon peel in Got that. So let's answer some questions. So there are several questions about what does this deadbeat Josh even do? Um... <laughs> And I, I honestly, I can't keep up with Becky. She is, um, it's crazy how much she gets done. That's for sure. But I do a lot more of like the back end stuff. Like, yeah. um, before the, the channel was a thing, I built all the garden beds, built the chicken coop. He does infrastructure. So yeah. he built the, the garden beds, he built the chicken coop and he built my irrigation system, which we will do a video on irrigation, probably closer to spring because that's a good time to be maybe like. February, March, we'll have irrigation videos coming out. So if you are starting a garden or you're interested in that, you'll be able to get it in before garden season because we put it in in August, which is not a good time to put irrigation system in. You should already have it in by that point. Yeah, and I did intend to do something before now, but it's just been very, very busy, very difficult with, you know, work, work, and then this stuff as well to also film a irrigation video. Yeah. And for me, I would, oh man, I'm, I'm going to get way too into weeds and the technical stuff. And it's just going to be a thing. I know it's going to be all consuming when I do it. So um, we'll, we'll dial it back a little bit. Becky will censor all the extra <laughs> minutia out. Not necessary. Um, but like right now he is building me a new website because um, my blog or where I keep my recipes is scratchpantry.com and it's pretty bare bones. And so he's working on building something that's going to be like more user friendly and better because he does, he's like a computer programmer, information systems. He runs that department of his work. And so he can build me, he can do that back end stuff that I can't do. And he um, helps, he's my, I call him my personal IT department. That's good. That's a good label. Yeah. yeah. To my patients when I'm at work. 
Josh is my personal IT department. This is me cleaning people's teeth right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I guess there was another question about um, why don't I help you harvest stuff so that we don't Couple. throw as much to waste or throw as much Oh, away. okay. Because I didn't realize how, how maybe, not negative, but it's a lot right now. And so, um, one, he doesn't want to be filmed. And so the only time I'm out there is if I'm filming. I don't honestly spend, I don't have enough time to like spend a ton of time out there unless I'm filming. And so he's not wanting to be filmed. So that's one reason. And it's just not his thing. And he's usually doing other things that are more important that he can do that I can't do. Like he is working on my website and that's a lot of work. And he does work a full time 50 plus hour a week job. And so he is working on the weekends on things like building a website. And I can't do that, but I can harvest. So that's why I'm out there harvesting. We do have some maybe bandwidth or pipeline issues as well with like Time. we can we can harvest maybe we get everything out of the garden but then we have to process all of it yeah and so there's that's just a uh, there's a lot of limiting factors on how much and we can I, actually get that is like the perfect point because it, in that last garden tour video i talk about I'm letting the chickens eat stuff that I could harvest because I just don't have the time. And so in the next video, I think that's coming out, I start having my family come and help me <laughs> because there's only one of me and Josh doesn't enjoy doing stuff in the kitchen. He's not, he doesn't, hasn't done it enough that he's like not efficient in it and it's not confident in it, you know, so it's not like he can cook, but it takes him time because he follows recipes and he's a really good cook. He I just, don't ad lib things very often. I'm... No vary by the book yeah takes a lot of time so i you will start seeing like my in the next few videos my family coming in and helping me because i just need help i need help so yeah what is the one thing that you will absolutely not cook uh probably liver liver yeah we got some tongue that we were supposed I to know. cook. I know. I'm going to do a video. It. So I did a freezer tour video, and I'm going to be doing one coming up soon because my freezers are busting at the seams. And I think it'd be fun to show you what it looks like after a bunch of harvest. Um, but I showed cow tongue because I buy my beef from a local rancher, and you get all the organs and things like cow tongue. And people said that it's really good. So I want to do a live, let me know if you're interested, where... I cook it, it takes hours to cook, so I'll cook it and then maybe we'll make some salsas or something and then we'll taste it together live. What do you guys think? Do you think that'd be a fun video? Or a fun live? That sounds fun. Um, okay, trying to definitely not miss any of the super chats that we have. Um, Becky, your homestead is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Did you grow up gardening? And I cannot believe you've only been gardening for two years. Um, no. Yes and no. My dad, we lived... So I grew up in Northeast Portland and we lived in the suburbs, completely suburbia, but we lived, our house backed up against a, you're going to shut the door. I'm going to shut the door because we're, there's we fruit just, flies in here because I just got about a dozen fruit flies. Hopefully you can't <laughs> see them, but they all just came in. Um, so I grew up in Northeast Portland in suburbia, but we lived, there was a, there's like a, it's called the Grotto in Portland and it's a, it's actually where the catholic church owns 36 acres that's in the middle of downtown portland or not downtown but like the middle of portland and it's a reserve and it's actually a retirement home for nuns and so our house in the city of portland backed up against that which was fantastic because it was super private and being in like the city but there was huge trees in oregon and washington you get huge trees and so we would have little gardens but we couldn't grow that much because sun Plus, we get a lot of overcast being in the Pacific Northwest, so sun. Oh, and gardening, I, I just learned a lot from YouTube. I watched a lot of YouTube. <laughs> so, um, you can learn just about anything. As on it YouTube, turns out. yeah. I love YouTube. How many chickens do we have? 11. We have 11 chickens. And I so, want some more, but we need to. I want to get silkies, and I want to get some of the like really fancy breeds that have like the big puffy things that are more like for show. They don't. Eleven chickens is too many chickens for two people. Um, I give most of my eggs away, and so. But we need a better setup. Our run is too small, and I've been letting them out, so they're like in my front yard. Yeah, they're fun. You've talked about the phrase meat birds, which I'm not 
crazy about. I know. Honestly. I do want to raise meat birds, but or turkeys, we'll see. turkeys, or I do want turkeys too. Ducks. We're not getting ducks. Not ducks. No. Mm-hmm. no. The one acre is definitely kind of limiting in some of that because. Well, I mean, technically, if you want to be real, I, we live in the city limits, and we're only supposed to have three chickens. Oh, I did not know that. I wish I hadn't known that. Why? You know me, just by the book. I know. But our, our old neighbors had 20... I mean, people that owned this house before had 25 chickens. Our neighbors have like 25 chickens and they have a rooster. So we won't ever get a rooster because I don't want to bother the neighbors with that. But The rooster is a, a factor. I won't get a rooster. For sure, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Did you get your dogs together? Well, we got actually... They're, they are brothers, but they are a litter apart. So same mom and dad, but they are a litter apart. Yeah. And they're definitely, they pal around like brothers. It's yeah. pretty awesome. And then there's Gizmo. Um, he, <laughs> he I guess, kind of pals around. He doesn't do a whole lot of um, anything, but he's he came along a few late, years later. He's um, our French Bulldog. Yeah, I guess by the name, did I say Gumbo or Gizmo? <gasps> I call him Gumbo because he's, he's kind of, he just kind of gumbos around, but. Stephanie just told me that she has a white bantam silky. So I really want to get the gray ones because the gray ones are super cute. And um, better late than never, Texas, we have one acre. And then someone asked that I don't want to miss the question, what is your favorite? Um, Miss Steph V asked, what is your favorite recipe of mine? Oh, man. I, I know this doesn't come across on film, but Becky's food, it looks good, but it really, really tastes good. It's... <laughs> It's hard to pick one. I guess my the one I typically would say is like beef stroganoff, but that's just kind of a classic. That's just something I really, really like. Comforting. Um, there's not a lot that she puts out that I don't like. In fact, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to think of anything. Soup. And even that, like the tomato soup. Yeah, the is tomato that video soup is yeah, good. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That tomato soup. I mean, it when was I good. like prior to me and Becky and her cooking stuff from her garden, I would have thought, okay, homemade from the garden tomato soup it's probably going to be like not as bland because they don't have as much like spices and seasonings in it or something but it is full of flavor and just it mm, was good tomato soup very tasty yeah stroganoff if you had to ask me what is his favorite recipe it would be stroganoff Mm -hmm. um what is your favorite person my favorite person personal favorite oh um (laughs) probably stroganoff but we've been eating stroganoff a lot lately for some reason between Different family events, people ask me to make, we've had a couple different parties and stuff, and people, I asked them, like we had a graduation for his sister, she got her master's, so I asked her what she wanted. Um, so we've just been eating stroganoff a lot lately, so stroganoff is probably my favorite too, but. Anything with noodles. Yeah. And a good sauce. That Parmesan chicken, good. the picture is not super great, and I don't show cooking it yet, um, but the Parmesan chicken that I did in the last freezer cooking video is really good too. That was actually the first meal I ever made for Josh when we were dating. It was like our fourth date, I think. Yeah. It was good. Sealed the deal. <laughs> it was good this time, too. Oh, the honey mustard chicken. Oh, the honey mustard chicken. I think that on, was two... That was the first one. Two that freezer meals ago, the first, first one. Video. Oh, that one oh, was my gosh. very, very good. Yeah. That's on scratchpantry.com, honey mustard chicken. A uh, question uh, from Silent Runner again. A lot of questions. Um, which do you prefer for beginners, pressure cooker or bath water canning? Probably water bath canning because it's less, that's what I started with. I just started pressure canning last year. I wish I had started a long time ago, but water bath canning is a lot less risky um, if you're doing really safe recipes like jams and applesauce and things like that. Um, But I mean, when I first started canning, I was nervous about eating it at first. And so I would definitely say water bath canning like jams and things like that because those are the safest recipes. You're hard pressed to mess those up. And then, um, but pressure canning is awesome too. I would, I'm going to be buying the Presto electric pressure canner. It was sold out for like months and months. And I think it just came back on the market because with everything, you know, like the distributing issues. Um, but I want to start using the electric pressure canner if I can get my hands on one. And I think that that would take a lot of the scariness out of pressure canning for people that are new to pressure canning. Cause I, as being a new pressure canner last year was nervous about it. Uh, switching gears a little bit, what are the, some of the names of your favorite YouTube gardener channels? channels? 
Um, I don't want to leave any out, so I feel that's tough. Yeah. It's hard. Um, that 1870s homestead. Love Rachel. Learned a lot from her. Um, the rusted gardener. He um, is more like just geared toward gardening, and he, I learned a lot from him, especially because last year was my first year of seed starting, and he does a lot of seed starting. Um, and my gardener, I was gonna say, am I huge. Gardener? Learned a ton from him. Um, I, I know um, Freedom Homestead. I watched a lot of their videos. Um, it's tough because home setting family. Some. I watch a lot. They don't do a ton like they do do some on gardening but um not as not as many um i know i'm missing people for sure there, and it's that's kind of inevitable i think yeah there's a lot of youtube consumption oh probably um someone i've talked about this in my last live but um foul traumatic off grid esther emery huge i Love. She doesn't make videos anymore, but I, all her videos are still up, so you can go find her. She's the best storyteller. She wrote a book. Phenomenal. She's actually the first YouTuber I ever found and subscribed. Like Her channel was the first one I ever found that was like, oh, you can actually subscribe to people. And she hasn't made a video in a long, long time. They're in Idaho. Um, and I, yeah, Esther Emery, Fouch Manic Off Grid. Really, really good channel. Um, um, we have a question about... Uh from Jenny M says, just found your channel last week. Totally love it. Welcome. Wonder what your thought of the white wheat flour from Azure Standard. What you thought, sorry. It ended up being white flour. So I don't know if you, so when you buy, there's different types of wheat, just like there's different types of tomatoes. And when I bought that flour, I was super confused on, I thought I might be buying whole wheat, hard white wheat, because there's like hard white wheat, hard red wheat, soft white wheat, soft, red wheat I think there's there's a ton of them and I really 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 like their soft white wheat flour because it is white flour you can you can get it at Costco but I can you can get a better price if you buy it through I just ordered actually I'm gonna be picking up my next Azure standard order at the end of the month and I had to buy some more of that flour and I really like it there was a little bit of confusion initially it was I was <laughs> very confused I thought about a hundred pounds of whole wheat flour but I didn't Just some other uh, super chats without questions, but we really appreciate that. That is awesome. You guys are, every single one of you, like, it blows my mind. I am so grateful for you for being here, hanging out with me. Like, the fact that you want to hang out in my kitchen. I mean, I'm doing all this stuff regardless if I film videos or not. That's why I decided why don't I just turn the camera on and, like, bring people along. Like, it just blows my mind that you want to hang out with me, and I love hanging out with you. I love it. It's so fun. Uh, I feel like I'm not alone in my kitchen all the time because usually I'm in, you know, I wear headphones a lot, so I just feel like I'm like in the kitchen by myself. So I feel like I have people hanging out with me. It's fun. Yeah. It sounds like it, from my point of view, it sounds like you do have people in the kitchen. Because <laughs> <Or at least laughs> I'm loud? About... <laughs> no, because you're talking, you know. It'd, oh, it'd yeah. Because kind of I'm talking to the camera. That's true. Um, which days are you going to be at the HOA? I'm going to be there the whole time. Yeah. My mom and I are going to, I mean, I don't, that's the only thing we're doing there. So I'm going to be there like open to close. Is anyone coming? I didn't even hear. I there's a lot going on, but I did see how long typically a couple of. I keep my canned items that. until I use them. So I mean, I think the recommendation is 18 months, but I have stuff in there that we've eaten that was from 2017 this year, and I mean, as long as it smells fine and everything, we eat it. As long as there's a good seal. Oh man, there's so many. We're what made me decide to start my channel. Um hobby, business ideas. The biggest reason, Aneta, that I started my channel was because I don't write anything down. Like, that is not my strong suit. Like, words, I'm dis I'm super dyslexic, and so, like, journaling, being type A, like, that stuff is not, like, in my strong suit at all. But I can pick up a camera and take pictures, and I can take video. And so the reason I started it is because my first year being here, I it was January 2000, it was January... 2020. 2020 the 10th of January and I was sitting at my island about to start seeds and I was thinking I regret that I did not start this channel a year ago when we bought this house and so I wanted to document this year's garden because I didn't do it last year well maybe you meant 2021 then oh yeah 2021 
January 2021. Yeah. Because there's a single video from like June of 2020. I don't know where that one came from. I wanted to start a YouTube channel because the shutdown had happened and I was like, I can do something. But then June was when <laughs> I went back to work. Being a hygienist during the craziness was, is a lot emotionally and a lot on your body. And I put that video out. I don't think I was technically working when I filmed that video and edited it. But when I went back to work, I had no energy at the end of the day to think about YouTube. So after I had been to work for a little bit, cause June to January kind of got back into the groove. I realized like, I want to document this. And that's why I started it. Cause I wanted to document it. And I do sometimes, I haven't like watched any of my videos like fully through, but I'll watch like snippets of them. And I see like how my garden has progressed and it's kind of crazy. If you're in it every day, you don't see those progressions, but you it's watch easy it. for it to just pass by. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Simply Sarah that says, what are your tips for freezer meals if you don't have a chest freezer? She's a city dweller. Well, I was a sweaty city dweller. I still technically live in the city. I just happen mm -hmm. to have a bunch of freezers, but um, probably doing marinated chicken, marinated meat. That's probably because they lay nice and flat and you could stack a ton of those up. Um, cause you can make those from scratch, make like marinated chickens. If you've watched my videos, I just throw marinades together. And that's been a game changer for me, having those in the freezer. And then all I have to do is whip up two sides, like a vegetable and a starch. And you can stack a lot of marinated meats in a small space. Especially the honey mustard. The chicken. honey mustard chicken is oh. good. And the teriyaki chicken. The teriyaki yeah. chicken is good too. Those are some good ones. Those. Yeah. Really good. It's hard not to get excited. Even the leftovers from that. Mm. So people always ask like, why do you cook so much for two people? And it's because I don't cook every day. I probably will only cook three times a week and we eat leftovers because we don't go out to eat for lunch. We maybe go out to eat once a month for dinner. And so I'll cook dinner for us with freezer meals or maybe I'll like tomorrow, um, I harvested mushrooms. Um, I planted wine cap mushrooms in the spring and I harvested a bunch of them yesterday. So tomorrow I'm gonna make, I have some New York steaks um, thawing and I'm gonna make a nice dinner, which I don't cook like that every night, but it's gonna be, I'm going to make those mushrooms into a mushroom sauce over the steak and it's going to be really good. But Sounds amazing. I'm excited. Be good. We do have some questions about what we do other than homesteading. It's hard to remember the time <laughs> before homesteading. Um, we used to go out to eat a lot. We um, did. Pre craziness of 2020. We've, Especially in the last house. Yeah. Cause we like good food. That's kind of like our hobby is like good food and we didn't eat out fast food. Like we, didn't eat out at lunch or anything like that, but we would go to nice dinners. Like that's one thing we enjoyed doing. We like wine tasting. We'd go to the coast. At yeah, least we'd go to the coast. Oregon a coast. times a year, a few times a year. Yeah. Um, Josh likes to golf and I drive the cart. <laughs> I have no desire to golf, but I love driving the cart. I drink a beer, I drive the cart. It's a lot of fun for it's... some of us. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little stressed because my driving sometimes is a little questionable maybe. It's but. like a it's a game within a game sometimes. But yeah. it's fun. And I haven't gone this year yet because of YouTube. I've been too busy. He's been going and golfing. You guys probably hear me talk about like, oh Josh is golfing. I'm making him breakfast or dinner, but I don't think we're gonna I don't think I'm able to go before the rains come, but I do like going golfing with him. It's fun. It is fun to have you with. Yeah. Because she's a constant cheerleader, which is nice. It's uh sometimes I might be a little too loud. So you're supposed to be quiet with all the golf course, but for for those of you that golf, uh, rarely <laughs> do you have a game where you're like, yeah, I'm doing great. I feel like <laughs> That's why I don't want to learn to golf. Like I have no desire to learn to golf because him. So he has two best friends that he goes with. So if there's the four of us, it's perfect because there's two carts and there's four people, and I'm I just like cheer them on as they go, and we'll be like hitting them off into the woods or great Top job in the balls <laughs> way behind and she's like oh you're doing great <laughs> like thank you and they're always so stressed and i'm just like having a good time in the sun oh, like enjoying every minute of it so it's fun becky is amazing i think you all know that and oh, thanks. but she is she is truly amazing thank you okay let's try and pick out some questions okay here. oh we did get another super chat would you ever consider teaching on time management you are such a go-getter i'd love to learn how you do it all and that's from christy wilson um I could maybe do a bit, um, something, but I don't do it all. And I think that's where, um, I try to show that in my videos that I don't do it all. Like 
things rot in the garden or my kitchen is a disaster. Like right now there's currently dishes in my sink. Um, there's laundry that's in the dryer that's not folded. So I don't do it all. Um, I just have to try to pick what's the most important thing at that time. So, but time management, I think trying to decide what's the most important thing and doing that, I guess, I don't know. It's a good question. It is pretty amazing. Um, starting a YouTube channel takes a lot of work. That's for sure. There's especially when you're learning how to edit, yeah. uh, how to film, it's overwhelming. everything really, how to do all of it. <laughs> um, and yeah. I, I think what's interesting is I think you cut out TV almost yeah, entirely. Yeah, I, I don't watch very much TV. I still watch Real Housewives. I make time for Real Housewives. It's too much to his chagrin. There is that. Um, but that I think that helps. Yeah, us I I don't dollars. watch very much YouTube anymore, which makes me sad. But I <clears> used to watch a lot of YouTube. And Becky is very focused too. She does not overthink or overanalyze things. She just goes and just does it. I, I know for me, yeah. that's something I struggle with is if I have a bunch of stuff I need to get done, I'm constantly thinking of how I'm going to optimize it or how I'm going to do it. And what so sometimes I you just, waste time doing that. It's, I guess, what's it, it called? It's a analysis paralysis? Analysis by paralysis or yeah. analysis of paralysis. Paralysis by analysis or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. Becky doesn't have that. She, she just knows the things she needs to do and she just goes and does them. And maybe she makes mistakes sometimes, but she learns from them. And so it, yeah. she gets a lot done as a result. It's really awesome. Yep, I do break things all the time. I'm the one that breaks things in the house all the time because of it, but. I think we've got a couple other questions here uh, from Narnia Liss. Oh, some, okay, go ahead. Oh, uh, you are my favorite YouTuber. Which Thank is you, that's humbling. Awesome. <laughs> I was like, I still don't even believe that I'm a YouTuber. It's just me hanging out in my kitchen. Like, it's. You're very humble. I don't think of myself as a YouTuber. I'm. Um, she asked, so what are, what's, or I guess I'm assuming she, that's probably not great, but what's your top 10 things to grow for a beginner? Number one, grow what you like to eat. Mm. That is huge, huge, huge. Last year I grew a ton of stuff because you see them in everyone's garden, but if you don't like to eat it, do not grow it. Don't do it because you won't eat it. And then it goes bad. What are some of those things? Like beets. beets? We don't like that's beets. Tough. And I, this year I grew beets. Why did I grow beets? I don't know. And there's literally a bunch of them rotting out there right now because we don't, I made one beet salad. We do like beet salad, but not enough to, when I have everything else that's coming in the garden, why would I eat a beet salad when I have so many other things? So many other things. So number one thing, grow what you like to eat. That's basically food storage. If you want to get into like bulk buying and things like that, you know, prepper, food preservation, all that stuff. Don't can anything you like, don't like to eat. Don't buy in bulk anything you don't like to eat. If you don't eat beans, don't buy dried beans. Like, that's huge, you know? Because it'll just go to waste. It'll sit and it won't be eaten. But the other two things, if you like tomatoes, grow tomatoes because they taste way better than store-bought. Mm -hmm. And I personally like homegrown carrots. And... I would say potatoes, too. Homegrown potatoes are really good. The and thing you get is, a lot of them. You Potatoes are cheap to buy, so you can definitely buy potatoes cheaper than you can grow potatoes. But... Digging out root crops is one of the most fun things you can do. It's like treasure hunting. It's so fun. And so I do like growing potatoes, even though they're probably not the most cost effective thing to grow. But you don't garden because you're saving necessarily a ton of money. You do it because it gives you exercise. It gets you vitamin D being outside. There's so many other things that you get from just then growing. If you were to do the dollar and cents. Um, the break even point is well down the road for sure. Yeah, because we could live in a really... We could live in a tiny house in the back of someone's yard and buy the quality food we grow and save money. But there's so much more that you get being outside and doing all those things. What is your favorite so. tomato? That's a good question. Um, I have a favorite tomato. He does. It's a chocolate cherry tomato. It's a chocolate striped cherry tomato. Chocolate striped. I just know it as chocolate. It's They're chocolate kind of like striped, I think. Green and brown and red. Little They're cherry striped. Tomatoes. Oh, they are. I think. Um, this year, if you watch my garden tour videos, my big, uh, big beef, like they are beautiful, classic, perfect, beautiful, round red tomatoes. I'm going to grow a ton of those next year because they did phenomenal. I'm going to stick away. I'm going to stay away from a bunch of the, um, heirlooms because my heirlooms just didn't do very good. I like the, um, Roma tomatoes. I'm going to grow a bunch of Roma tomatoes next year and I'm going to grow the orange, I think they're called sun gold. 
They're a cherry tomato that is very prolific. I have mm -hmm. to write all this down. I'm going to do a video on tomatoes. And then my Dr. Witchies did really good. I got a, almost a two pound Dr. Witchies. A huge tomato. It looked like three tomatoes combined. Yeah. Um, it's on my Instagram if you want to see a picture of it. It's literally this big. It actually does look like three tomatoes. And it's Dr. Perfect. Witchy tomato, it's a it's an heirloom and it is <clears throat> super it's doesn't have a ton of seeds. It does it's not super like juicy. It's very meaty. Like if you want a uh, tomato sandwich tomato, that is it. But you don't get very many of them. Like I think my Dr. Witchy's plant has I think I'm gonna get like three or four tomatoes off of it. But they're big tomatoes. And it didn't have a lot of seeds either. It was a lot no, of like meat. meat. Yeah. 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 Whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have another question here from Christy Wilson that says, where is the best place to buy starter seeds for beginner gardeners? Um, so to be honest with you, there, there are seed growers and there are seed sellers. So people who sell seeds buy seeds from seed growers. So um, it's kind of like a lot of things online too where um, all the big seed companies generally buy all their seeds from the same people because there's people that grow seeds and there's people that sell seeds. They're usually not the same person. And there is a company in Oregon that I'm trying to do videos with, but they're not writing me back. They're called Territorial Seeds and they're based in kind of like Eugene, Oregon area. And they grow a lot of their own seeds. And I love that company. They're called Territorial Seeds. And I really want to do a video with them because they're kind of a cool seed company because they not only sell seed, but they grow seed that they sell. Um, but you can buy seed really from anywhere. Um, you even have some Dollar Tree I, I was going to say that. I love my Dollar Tree seeds. You get, um, But if you want to support like a smaller company, like MI Gardener is good. Um, rareseeds.com. I like Johnny Seeds. They're a huge company, but I their quality of seed, like I had 100% germination, not 100%, but I had really good germination with Johnny Seeds, but they are a little bit more expensive, but I feel like they um, source their seeds really well. Um, yeah, so I wanted, I want to do a, a video with um, Territorial Seeds because they are a West Coast company and a lot of the... Um, people that like uh, talk about seed companies on YouTube are like West Coast companies and there are some really good, uh, or East Coast companies, there's mm -hmm. there some good West Coast seed companies too. It'd be cool to highlight some of those. Yeah, I, I would like to do that, but tell them to write me back because they're not writing me back. We do have a few that um, super chats that we may have like missed. Oh. I hope we didn't miss too many of them. Oh my gosh, if you, if, through, but, yeah. Write um, me on Instagram if I missed you and I will write you back. I write people back on Instagram. We do have a, um, a question here from Peaches. It says, would you like more land and would you consider moving? Yeah. It's a good question. That's So Josh and I have never, I don't think we've ever lived somewhere where we're like, that's our forever home. I mean, we only lived in two places, but we, we love it here. We like, I don't know. I feel like we like progress and we like change to some degree. And uh, I think we could settle down if we found the right place. There's always, there's so always there's things something. that we, so I'll tell you what our, our list are, which you can never have your list, right? So we want a view, we want land, we want a shop, and we want to have a place for a garden. And water would be great. Water? A water feature, some sort of like creek or, yeah, I guess that's I, on my I, list. I feel like, like we want water for property or a view. Like, yeah. I feel like it's either waterfront or a view, right? Mm -hmm. Because both of us, but living where we live, there's not very much waterfront property. We don't live somewhere where, I mean, like, you're not going to get acreage and waterfront property. So, like, there's probably, but you could get acreage and a view. Okay. And so, the one thing this house doesn't have is it doesn't have a view. And it doesn't have sunsets, which I would like to be able to see sunsets. So. There's definitely room for improvement. There's, you know, also we, like, an acre is, um, there's a lot more we could do for sure. Mm-hmm. But it would be interesting to see what we could do with five or ten. But we do, I mean, like we have plans with this house that we need to improve. And so we don't have any things. plans to move. We don't, we're not. There's no plans. No. There's no plans. No. And a lot of us, we're not a lot of us just dreaming, it. you know, yeah. stuff and, and really like being realistic. We, we should really just, you know, probably try and settle down here more and do the things we need to do. Well, we will do but, the things we need to do. Like we are going to be doing a new roof in the next. We've been, that's uh, what. It's mostly house-based stuff, yeah. really. The you, property is amazing, and then there's some things with the house that the, the need thing work. that's kind of crazy about this property is we are on an acre, but we live in town. Like we are in 
the city where we live. We are, it's, this house was built before this whole area was developed. And so Costco is four minutes from my house. Walmart is three minutes. So <laughs> Maybe a little less specific. Okay. Like, or it could be six minutes. Or it could be six or minutes. Or it could be six minutes. <laughs> yeah. But everything, yeah, everything's very close. Yeah. We're and, uh, which 20 is minutes nice. to downtown, 30 minutes to downtown Portland. Like, we're really close, so. We do love this house, but. I feel like we might. Oh, we just got another one from um, either Bass Wife or Bass Wife. One of the two. Bass, probably. Fishing. Um, she says, thank you. Love your channel. You guys need mods to boot out the trolls. <gasps> Are there trolls in here? Honestly, everything's moving so quickly that we can't catch the trolls. So I, I guess they're having a field day. Um, what does Josh congrats. do for work? Josh is a, um, he runs an IT department. He's a computer guy. I, yeah, I have a lot of Sandy, skills. would you ever consider doing cheese making videos? I love your channel. You're amazing. Thank you. Um, yes, I plan to do cheese making videos. I have made in the past ricotta cheese, like just personally, I've made ricotta cheese, mozzarella cheese, and cream cheese. Um, so I do plan to make those videos. It's, um, just a matter of time when I have time to do them. Um, I'm no expert in them, but you guys know I, I film stuff that I'm not an expert in. If you want to join along and see whether I make it taste good or not, that'd be awesome. Um, we are getting close. I think our plan was to go about an hour on this. Yeah. So if there are any other questions, we'll try and kind of filter through This is my here. husband, Josh. Someone asked if this is you. Indeed, Josh. I would say the other, uh, the better half, but I'm definitely not. I'm, oh, I'm, thanks, uh, Bill. I'm half. Would we move to Montana? Oh, Jamie! Um, we probably won't, won't move to Montana, but we go to Montana at least twice a year. Theoretically, I would. Yeah, but he would have to build me. I told him he had to build me a <clears throat> greenhouse if we moved to Montana. Yeah, the growing season is definitely Pretty shorter. Short. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to like about Montana, that's for sure. Beautiful. Josh's dad has a place out there that we um, enjoy in the winter and in the summer. And we yeah. do love Montana. I do like the changing of seasons. I grew up with snow yeah. um, in the, where we live currently. We don't really... Like, maybe we get a few inches of snow. And, and it's, it's a big deal. It's a whole thing. <laughs> it people shuts are, the city down. <laughs> people are going off the roads. It's it's mayhem. But Grocery stores sell out of food. It's a big deal. It's like the end of the world for three inches. But uh, I do enjoy, you know, change of seasons. And That's right. Someone, and, um, yeah. Allie said, you know you're a YouTuber when you have trolls. So apparently there were trolls tonight. And I apologize if anyone was inappropriate or said anything that was rude. I'm super sorry about that. Next time we will try to have someone. Normally we do. This time, we, I don't know why we didn't. But You're usually our Normally, person. I'm the moderator. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Normally, I'm the moderator, <laughs> and I don't have time to focus on it right now. So We probably won't get goats here. No. Because we, I don't think we could legally have goats. We don't really have anywhere for goats. Because our front half of our property is completely, like, landscaped and really beautiful. And so it's, like, half the backyard. And so it's not really, um, we don't really have a place for goats. It would, yeah, we don't even have a fence all the way around. If we there. ever did... <clears throat> dairy like if we ever moved it would be a cow probably um but becky wants a cow so bad it's not just so bad but i do i would like i would enjoy a dairy cow I think, if I anything had time. you mention every couple weeks i'm gonna think you want really bad do i mention a we, dairy cow you cow? every couple weeks i would say an average but yeah. we need definitely more than one acre and definitely not in town and probably more time too yeah we need more time i need more time um Madeline asked, um, oh, there's no question. Oh, that her husband's a gaming YouTuber as Sunday. Oh, do you know? Sunday? I'm not familiar with him. Josh I do does game. play video games. I do play some games. Tell him what um, games you're playing right now. No. No? <laughs> it's not relatable. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I do play some games. I, I um, do, I'm a, a, a side guest on a streamer, and yeah, I, yeah. I do that some nights, but I am... Always in the background. Well, Josh so. might be in more videos. Um, I mean, he probably still will show up more, like tasting my food, and um, he he's going to do an irrigation video, mm -hmm. and that's the only one we have planned. Like he'll actually be like talking in it, other than like tasting the food that I make or whatever. It's tough because Becky's definitely the um, the focal point of the channel, and he's. <sighs> He's embarrassed or he's shy. I would 
slow the process right down to. That's for well, sure. Well, I mean, maybe if you were if you <clears throat> if you were trying to cook alongside me, you might slow the process down. But I mean, you can maybe show your face when you try something, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> Instead, now Don't we hold have. Your breath. We do have some. Um, we have like a new camera. I think Becky mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Sometime, uh, yeah. Let me know. A few, few videos. I, only I've only posted one video with the new camera. It's what we're filming on right now. But um, the tomato soup video was on my new camera, and the video that's going to be coming out on Monday is on my new camera. And let me know if you can tell a difference. The one thing, the reason I bring it up is, you know, I tasted something in that. I think it was the last video that you posted from. Oh, the you can camera. actually hear. And you can hear all the mouth noises, and <laughs> <laughs> those are the things I can't. <laughs> That make me uncomfortable. I can't deal with so. Yeah, let's. There's probably a dozen other things. I think there's questions. Um, we've got some more. Uh, another comment from. Oh, Ms. thank Stuffy. you. About corn camp. Would love to know the thank games you. or systems, and Skyrim is everything. So I don't. I guess I don't play a lot of um, like, MMO type games, but yeah. I do play. Well, we're oh, okay. first. Okay. I do play. Um, currently, there's New World that just came out, so I'm playing some of that. And then the one I've been playing a lot, which is a little bit more niche, or niche, is uh, Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> he does and like Tarkov. Less of a game and more of a stressful uh, experience, I guess. It's it's something. So I have played Skyrim, but it has been a few years. We have a nice one. Buckhorn Camp says, "I love your channel." Thank you. It's awesome. Yeah, we're just two like normal people. Josh plays video games and. I buy stuff at the grocery store, can't grow everything mm -hmm. at, you know, in the backyard. Just normal. We work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other questions? I Do we... Think there are a million questions. Is there anything that we were thinking we would answer? We met online. Um, Do I like composting? I've been composting in place or like chop and drop, which has been working for me. Just literally like taking the plant that I take like if I pick all the peppers off and the pepper plant's done, just pulling that out of the ground and dropping it there and letting it decompose has been kind of my thing because it saves time. What's my real housewives? This is the most important question of the oh night. Oh my goodness. Um, Beverly Hills, Salt Lake City is super good and um, Orange County and um, New York. Those are my favorites. Too many to count, <laughs> frankly. I don't, they churn a lot Josh of those things out. Josh hates Bravo, and I love Bravo. It's my favorite. It's, it's a dynamic we have, that's for sure. Anytime he walks into the room and I'm watching Real Housewives, or anything on Bravo, or anything, I have to pause it, because his commentary is just too much. I, I, I cannot. Can't. And I cannot. I, I, I know we both can't. There's so no way for me to, I to tell walk him to leave. in and not say make a comment, or imitate one of them in some way. I, I'm the worst with that. He is the worst with it's it. Just so it's hard. literally terrible. <laughs> it's trash TV. I know it's bad, but it's so good. It's so good. Oh my goodness. Yes. See, we can't go down this rabbit hole, but like the whole Erica Girardi thing, yes, I'm following that. But will we get a greenhouse? We will probably get a greenhouse. We would like to do a greenhouse. Yeah, Josh. See, if we do more videos with Josh, he he wants to build me a greenhouse, and so if he builds me a greenhouse. Josh will be building me a grand house and there'll be videos on that. Mostly time constraints, but that is yeah. something that we want to do. Yeah. For, for sure. sure. Well, do we want to do one or two more and then wrap it up? Or do, was there anything else you want to go over? Yes, we will do greenhouse videos. Yes, we watch The Office. Oh, I've watched oh my the gosh. Office. Probably four or five times through. I've watched it 14 or 15 times through. So we, um, our last house we did, we remodeled every single surface of that house. So we didn't homestead before. We didn't grow food. We didn't do all those things. But our last house, we remodeled the entire thing. And every weekend, that's all we did was remodel that house. And so we would have the office. I mean, we watched that multiple times through just in the background while we were working no on floors we don't need to see it we just we can hear it yeah. and we can see the scenes and so it could just be playing and we've watched it sat down and watched it oh, through multiple sure. times but yeah all right greenhouse videos yep awesome 
Central Oregon, Vicki. I love Central Oregon. My parents grew up, growing up, my parents had a house, like a vacation home in Eagle Crest. So I spent a lot of time in Central Oregon. Oh, thank you. You enjoy my canning videos. I enjoy making those canning videos. Uh, there's a question about my favorite oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be tough to pick a favorite because they're always so... I don't know what they are sometimes because they're it's like what we have around. So yeah. like a, I think a good classic cinnamon, uh, cinnamon, is good. cinnamon apple, apple is probably super. That's probably my favorite. Josh, we got all kinds of stuff. Where'd you grow up? The UP, Florida. Where did I grow up? Yeah, he's lived in like There's twenty a, states or thirteen. I don't states. know if it's just all the points of the country. Yeah, yeah. Georgia, Florida, Michigan. A lot of moving until um, we're in middle school and we've kind of settled down in the same area that yeah. I am currently. So. Um, been all over the place. Well, thank you guys. Um, does Josh help in the garden? Yes, he does the infrastructure stuff in the garden. Yeah. Um, so, I think that's it. How long has it been? I it went by really fast. What it, time is it? It is, it's been an hour and six minutes. Roughly. Oh, wow. I think we're going to wrap it up here, but we really appreciate everyone coming Josh, by. Josh, do you have a Twitch? Joining. I don't have a Twitch. <laughs> Uh, it is a different version of Josh. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone were to find that, which I find highly unlikely, it it's is, not the same group of people that are watching Twitch. That are it watching is a it. high. I did see one of them on here. Oh, actually, I saw James. I see oh, James. James, um, James but, thanks for supporting my channel. Josh says you watch my videos, and it's really it's, cute. It is cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all think, right, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for being in my kitchen. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys got to finally meet Josh because he does exist. He is real. I'm real. I He's wasn't cute. even paid by the hour. So <laughs> I couldn't afford him probably. <laughs> Yikes. What? Anyway. That got weird. It was fun to join you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You probably will see him a little bit. So we'll see you guys next time.